Hi, my name is Umberto Mucci and this is We The Italian News, a podcast about Italy during coronavirus times. Today is Wednesday, December 23. This is the last video of this year. We, we, we The Italian News will take a little break and come back on Monday, January the 4th. Unfortunately, today in these hours, Italy will reach the ugly threshold of 70,000 victims killed by this terrible virus. Starting tomorrow, all of Italy is on lockdown until January 6, with a little more freedom between December 28 and December 30, and in the day of January 4. We are preparing to live a very strange and a bit sad Christmas, but it is a sacrifice that must be made to protect our health and that of the family members we would like to kiss and hug, but do not want to endanger. The government has tried to meet the requests to be able to move a bit more by allowing the trip to a single private home located in the same region only once a day in a time frame between 5 a.m. and 10 p.m. It is the usual very Italian way to give rules knowing that many will interpret them in their own way. My sympathy goes out to the police who will have to do the checks. Not only will they, will, they will be working on holidays instead of being with their families, but when they stop someone they will have to suffer the humiliation of asking if it is the only trip of the day forced to believe in the answer as if it were possible to check it. As usual in Italy, those who make the rules leave the way out by winking and those who have to control feel marked while we should all be thanking them. In Italy there is a tradition of thinking that leap years are unlucky. To end this leap year, yesterday we had an earthquake and an Etna eruption at the same time in one of the most beautiful areas not only of Italy but of the whole world, Sicily. The two things are not related to each other and fortunately there are no victims nor much damage. In Italy we can't wait for this year to end, I assure you. Pfizer-BioNTech COVID vaccine has been approved by European regulator. Vaccinations will start in all Europe on Sunday, December 27. As already mentioned, the first pe person vaccinated in Italy will be a nurse at the Spallanzani Hospital in Rome, to which we donated the 53,000 euros raised by which Italians thanks to your generosity. The first 10,000 doses of the vaccine, which for Europe are produced in Belgium, will arrive in Italy on Christmas night. And if you will allow me the rhetoric, for once we will return with the heart when we were children and we waited with joy for the arrival of something on the night of December 24. It will be the Italian army to distribute it throughout Italy, although to date, December 23, now, in half of the regions there are not all the super fridges needed to store the vials. In addition, it is still unclear who will have to inject it. The government has decided that the students of the schools of sp specialization that should do it will not be paid, but they will only be recognized as training credits. This is the same government that has allocated funds to return money to the Italians who have bought scooters and bathroom fixtures, which for the Italian government probably seem to be more important than to pay those who have been calling heroes for almost a year and literally saved hundreds of thousands of Italian lives. Frankly, this is shameful. I'm telling you, not in my name, not on my behalf, I absolutely do not approve this. A good thing, even if it doesn't make up for not paying them as they deserve, is that during 2021, Italy will issue a new two euro coin, the, the denomination that in some circumstances become, uh, becomes a collector's item, dedicated to those who tread treat and assist COVID patients, doctors, nurses, healthcare personnel of all kinds. A man and a woman will be depicted on a coin, both wearing scrubs and masks, he with a folder under his arm, she with a stethoscope around her neck, overlaid with an inscription, thank you, surrounded by a stylized red cross and a heart. Staying on the subject of the fight against virus, there is a strange thing that no one in Italy seems to understand, at least I don't. The production of 2 million doses of the monoclonal antibody to be used against COVID has started in Latina, in the Lazio region. It is a particularly complex production that requires high specific skills and confirms the Italian excellence also in this field. This is the most advanced and promises drug to fight the virus as for now. However, Italy is not among the countries that have ordered doses as soon as they become available in the first three months of 2021. There are the United States, Canada, Israel, but not Italy. 
It is the most promising and innovative drug to fight the, vi the virus. We produce it here. We have the second highest number of deaths in Europe, but we will not use it to treat our patients, at least not immediately. Unbelievable. In the meantime, 500 relatives of Italian COVID victims are filing lawsuits against leading politicians, both national and local, in Lombardy. They claim that the choices made in fighting COVID at the beginning of the pandemic led to numerous deaths that could have been avoided if different decisions have been made. The families had already sued in criminal justice, now they are suing in civil justice, asking for a total of 100, uh, 100 million euros divided into precise calculations for each family and inspired by the principle that any unjust damage, intentional or negligent, must be compensated. Bologna is at the top of the annual ranking of the, of the, on the quality of life in Italy. The city gains 13 positions compared to 2019 and proceeds on the podium Bolzano, which remains second, and Trento, which remains third. Milano loses the first place. But in the year of COVID-19, the Lombard province is worse than compared to last year, with the exception of Sondro and Mantua. 25 new metrics were added to the evaluation panel in, ad in addition to the usual nine indicators to measure the impact of COVID from the number of infections to the mortality rate to the digital divide. In addition to Bologna, the entire Emilia-Romagna region is doing well. Five out of nine provinces are among the top, top 20. While tourist destinations and large cities are losing ground almost everywhere. The only region uh, bucking the trend is Liguria, where Genoa is celebrating the reopening of the new bridge by recovering 26 positions. Many medium-sized cities have gained numerous positions in this ranking. The south, on the other hand, remains at the bottom of the ranking despite having the lowest number of infections. The top 10 cities in, for the quality of life in Italy in 2020 are Bologna, Emilia Romagna, Bolzano, Trentino Alto Adige, Trento, Trentino Alto Adige, Verona, Veneto, Trieste, Friuli, Venezia, Giulia, Udine, Friuli, Venezia, Giulia, Aosta, Valle d'Aosta, Parma, Emilia Romagna, Cagliari, Sardinia, Pordenone, Friuli, Venezia, Giulia. Now, my friends, <laughs> as previously said, we are taking a 10 day break from these videos, although all the rest of We the Italians activities and content doesn't stop during the holidays. We the Italians has never stopped a single day since 2013. My advice is always the same. Please stay safe, stay healthy, protect yourselves and take care of your families in the best way possible. Please, please be careful. I'll see you again on Monday, January 4, 2021, when this horrible 2020 will begin for the second part of the second season of We the Italian News, the podcast regarding Italy during coronavirus times. Merry Christmas, happy holidays from all of us in the We the Italians family. Ciao from Rome.